Good boy. Ready? Go get it. Hey everybody, welcome to another video from BW's Blogosphere. I want to tell you today about how I created a really neat presentation where I work for Easter Sunday. Now this presentation encompassed a bunch of different projection screens in our auditorium and involved surround sound, so the people who came were just enveloped in sound from all sides. It's easier than you might think, so in this brief 10 minute tutorial, thanks to YouTube's stupid and arbitrary time limit, we're going to cover authoring surround sound in Adobe Premiere CS4 as well as using Reason to create a surround sound score, even though that's not what Reason is created to do really. And of course, using some text animation, some basic techniques and After Effects, and some codecs that you can use to author on the Mac and then play on a PC. Okay, let's dive right in because our time is limited and I apologize for having to speed along. Um, first of all, when you're doing a surround sound project in Premiere, you need to know that when you create your sequence right from the very beginning, you've got to choose that you want to do surround sound. So click on the Tracks tab and choose 5.1 under Audio. Because if you do not choose a master track of 5.1, there's no way that you're going to be able to move the, the different things around in your track. Now, here is our presentation. And as you can see, we've got a lot of different video tracks and a lot of different audio tracks. The reason being that I put all the different videos and audio <laughs> together and then later when I rendered it out I chose which video tracks went to which screens and which audio tracks went to which speakers. Let's look at audio first to explain what I mean. If we uh, click into the audio mixer and hit the tilde key to bring it full screen, you can see that when you're working with a 5.1 project, for each channel, each audio track, you not only get a left and right pan, but you get this full field where you can move the source around. So this would be top left, that's top right, back left, back right, and right here is your center channel, and right there is your subwoofer. So basically in my presentation, we just created a bunch of stereo files and either panned them front left and right or back left and right, as you can see here in track two. So that's all we did to create a quadraphonic four channel thing. We, we didn't use the center channel or the subwoofer, but we could have very easily. So using the same principle, I did the same thing with video. So just like depending on if we put audio on track one or two, it went to the front or back, I did that with video as well. Whereas if we put video on video track five, that meant it was going to a certain video screen. Whereas if I put video on track three, that meant it was going on a different video screen. So as we scrub through this little uh, program window here, you can see we've got some interviews going on. And because these interviews are on tracks four and five, that means they're going to the side screens. And because the things underneath it, a little bit of text here on a video background, stock footage, um, that's on tracks one, two, and three. So that was routed to the center projection screen. So when I rendered, I rendered it once like this, and then I hid the bottom layers and revealed the top layers, and I rendered again. That produced two separate video files, one to play in one computer for the center screen, one to play in the other computer to appear on the side screens. So this is a very easy way to create a multi-screen presentation from one sequence in your program. Now if you look here at the different elements, we've got some video interviews that I mentioned earlier. I'll just bring one up full screen so you can see we shot these people in front of a projection screen that was running a digital juice um, jump back. And so that just kind of gives them a, a cool setting that is not like being shot against a wall. It's not like being shot outside, but it really just provides them in this ambient space where you're not concentrating on the background, but you're really experiencing what they're saying. On top of them, I've layered this other digital juice jump back. And with Premiere Pro CS4, you can choose a really cool blending mode under your opacity here. I chose Linear Dodge, and it's just a lot like Photoshop. You don't have to just normal dissolve, but you can add, you can, you can do difference, you can do exclusion, you can do all these different blending modes, and that's what I did here to kind of make our interview subjects feel like they're part of that graphic and not just kind of standing out there in front of it. Now, if you look behind these two layers for what's going to the center screen, all I've got is some stock footage background and an uh, Adobe After Effects title above it. So I brought that in via Adobe Dynamic Link. Here's the original product. And all we did was create a text layer, use a little outline, use a little drop shadow, 
and then animate two properties, the scale and the tracking amount. I love doing this because it's one of the simplest things you can do. It takes almost no time at all. And yeah, it looks very professional. It's non-distracting and it's just like that text is coming out at you, spreading out. So it's very easy to do. Like I say, you just go to your first frame, set a keyframe for scale at 100, set a tracking keyframe for zero, and then go out about five seconds, set you two more keyframes, expand your tracking, expand your scale. And you can see the, the effect is really cool. Now I didn't even render that out. Like I say, I just brought it into Adobe Premiere as an Adobe Dynamic Link, which allowed me to edit it if I wanted to change the font. It also brought in the background as truly transparent, so I could add it to this stock background within Premiere, and I could sync up these words within Premiere as well, because I hate working with audio inside of After Effects. After Effects is not really designed for audio. So by doing as little as I can within After Effects, I'm able to do more in Premiere where I can see the right background, I can hear what's going on, and I can splice it together just right. Okay, well that's basically how we did the video of this multi-screen presentation and a little bit of the audio. But if you'll notice, paid my penalty, died my death. There's some music in there too. The music I scored especially for this day and I did it in Reason. Now if you've never used Reason, it's a very cool, very easy to use program. Not specifically designed for surround sound, but that's not too hard to get around. Um, within Reason, you've got your mixer, which looks just like a real world mixer, where you've got faders, you've got solo buttons, you've got EQ, you've got aux sends. Beneath your mixer, you've got your rack mount gear that's producing the sounds, and below that, you've got your sequencer where you can see your MIDI information. So basically, I just created one instrument at a time by right clicking in the black space, choosing Create Instrument by Browsing Patches, and then I just browse the patches, just like it says. Click on something play it a little bit, see how it sounds, and then bringing it in. Now I created a track for each of my instruments. I didn't play all the strings on one track. I created a different track for every single part of my orchestra. That was so that later on I could separate them out, I could tease them out into different speakers. So the first cello is here on this track and it's panned hard left. The second cello is placed on this track and it's panned hard right. And, and so forth and so on. With the third and fourth cello, I also panned them hard left and hard right. Now, how did I get them to the back speakers though? How did all that not just go up front? Very simple, I rendered two files. Just as in Premiere, when I hid tracks, rendered and then unhid them and rendered again, here I'm soloing tracks, I'm soloing everything that's going to the front speakers rendering out a WAV file, and then I'm unsoloing that and soloing everything I have going to the back speakers, rendering out another WAV file. And that comes into Premiere, uh, if I can find the files here, as two different WAV files, and I just titled them Front and Surround. So in your Front file, you got a really mellow electric guitar rhythm par, you've got your percussion, you've got the main strings, but then in the back, you've got some kind of neat sounds that just kind of hit you from the back. Get that dulcimer, the kind of eastern sounding dulcimer. That little bell sound, whatever that is. And, and so when people are sitting in the crowd, they're thinking, did I, did I just hear that from behind me? And, and so I panned it hard left or hard right and hard front or hard back because I wanted it just to be like that instrument was really back there, really behind the person's head. So. Very cool, easy way to do that. The last step is rendering it out. If we go here to File, Export Media, let me click on the sequence first. There we go. You're gonna see that you got a lot of different export options. And I've found that if you're gonna use QuickTime or some of the more popular ones, it's, it's actually gonna ask you to pay to be able to encode in surround sound, like this Dolby surround sound. I don't wanna pay for nothing. That, that sounds stupid that you'd have to do that. So I found that you use H.264 and just go to the audio tab here, choose 5.1 channels, and it'll encode it for you, and it works perfectly. Once you export it as an MP4 file, it takes a little bit of finagling to get that to play correctly in surround sound on a PC, and it looks like we're out of time. So I'm gonna have to talk about that next time, but hopefully you guys enjoyed this little video, and uh, hopefully you'll check out the original video to see how it looked when we played it in our auditorium. And uh, anyway, that's it for our time. We'll see you next time.